Buenos días, Ela. Eh, bueno, en estos días en que usted ha estado con nosotros en el workshop, en las muchas actividades que hemos tenido, eh, hemos sido testigos de su generosidad, de su compromiso social, eh, de su sabiduría. Con esta entrevista queremos hacerle unas preguntas que son inquietudes que muchos, muchos jóvenes tenemos. Las respuestas y orientaciones que usted nos pueda dar son muy importantes para nosotros, dado que vivimos en un mundo que se ve muy complicado, en el que hay tanta confusión, tanta eh, información contradictoria, tantas dudas. Les voy a preguntar sobre política, sobre religión, sobre ciencia y sobre educación. Empiezo por la política. Bueno, muchos jóvenes pensamos que la política es un modo eficaz para lograr los cambios que son necesarios para resolver muchos problemas sociales. Pero al mismo tiempo la, la política nos parece muy complicada. Implica una lucha por el poder y que en esta lucha para ganar hay que prometer lo que no se puede cumplir. Hay que criticar al adversario, hay que exaltar las propias cualidades y virtudes. Hay que hacer pactos y alianzas que, con, gente que, con organizaciones o gente que muchas veces no son de nuestra confianza. Y por lo tanto transar nuestras propias ideas. Y hay además tantas prácticas discutibles en la política. No hay problema... Eh, de que para quienes trabajan, quienes participan en esta lucha política por el poder, resulten éticamente dañados, ¿qué es lo que piensa usted y qué nos puede aconsejar? Sí, okay, yes, I think that um, what you are saying is what happens at the present moment. And that is one of the reasons why the world is the way it is. It's full of um, problems and many people are suffering and the, all this is because of our system and here I'm not just talking about politics but everything mm -hmm. but when we come back to politics I think that just as in everything else in our society we also need to look at a change in politics a change of, um, of the way we see politics. Mm. So the first thing I would say in a new way of looking at politics is that we must bring ethics into politics. Mm. We cannot divorce politics from values, good values. They have to be within politics. So that's my first... Um, You know, yeah. Uh, the second issue is that at the present moment, when we look at what do we mean by democracy, and I'm talking about democracy because everybody is saying that um, we must have a democratic order. So throughout the world now, totalitarianism, monarchy, all those other forms of government have been pushed out. Mm -hmm. People have realized that they are not good forms of government. So we are now looking at democracy. But the issue is what kind of democracy? Mm -hmm. And for me, participatory democracy is the way to go. When we talk about participatory democracy, it means that the people participate in the democratic structures, mm -hmm. which then means that people have to be powerful. People in society have to say what they want to see in their government, mm -hmm. what they want to see the government doing. So the power must be with the people. Mm -hmm. And that power can only come if civil society is strong. If civil society insists that their political representatives come back and give them a report back, mm -hmm. that it's not just once in five years or once in four years, that you elect somebody to power and then they come back after four years to tell you. Mm -hmm. They have to report to you all the time and you have to hold them accountable. So it's civil society that has to be powerful and that has to tell them. 
The second thing about democracy, I would say, is that at the moment it's about opposition. So you have parties, you have a party that's governing and a party that stands in opposition. So all the time, once you get into government, anything that the ruling party says, the opposition has to object to. And I think that that is a very archaic way, way of thinking about democracy. Why can't the two parties or three parties or how many parties you have, they, are, they have said that they're going to work for the people. Mm -hmm. And so they should get together and work for the people. It doesn't matter who's in the ruling position, but you, what you promise to the people, you need to take it up mm. and tell them in government, not as opposition, but as improving the ways of delivery. Because there is no single answer to anything. It's how you deliver, what you do, and so on. So if everybody is together, they can hold, civil society can hold um, the, the, the um, um, bureaucracy, that is the people who are working to deliver. They work with the government to deliver. Mm -hmm. So that civil service can be accountable to the people. Mm -hmm. And if the people are strong, then the civil service will not think that they only have to account to their ministers, but they will see that they also have to account to the people. And so they will be good to the people. They will give the service to the people as the service is supposed to be given. Mm -hmm. So I think that if then there is a government of national unity, a cooperative government, uh, things would change a lot. It, it still can be democracy because um, democracy basically is okay. I don't have a problem with the word democracy, but I think there should be participatory democracy, that there should be cooperative government, that the uh, civil society has to hold the members of parliament as well as the civil service accountable to them. Um, hoy en día vemos que en Chile la, la, la sociedad civil está muy debilitada, no está interesada en, en la política, rechazan la política incluso por casos de corrupción, porque las cosas no han cambiado de hace muchos años, que hacen promesas que no se pueden cumplir. Eh, entonces, ¿qué se puede hacer para fortalecer eh, la sociedad civil? I think that uh, people generally uh, would like to think that um, the problem lies with somebody else, that to solve a problem, somebody else must solve it. And the reality is that somebody else doesn't solve your problem. You have to solve it yourself. And when people begin to realize and take the responsibility, the responsibility of um, electing the government, they should all participate in the election process. They should all participate in the um, making of a strong civil society and in directing what is going to happen in the future. Because I think the time for us to sit back and criticize and criticize and cry about things is over. You can't do that all the time. You have to do something to change. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really bring about changes, then you have to participate. It's a little more effort. It's a little more involvement. But we have to do that. Otherwise, we are going to just be sitting and moaning about everything and nothing is going to 
come right. Because there's no magic that's going to make it right. Eh, nosotros, pens nosotros pensamos que todas las personas somos iguales, que todos tenemos los mismos derechos y los mismos deberes. Pero normalmente las instituciones políticas nos separan en dos grandes, sec en dos grandes sectores. Los, dominado los dominantes y los dominados, los, dirigi los dirigentes y los dirigidos. ¿Usted cree que hay alguna manera de lograr que la sociedad no se divida entre dirigentes y dirigidos? Entre gobernantes y gobernados, élites y ciudadanos. Hombres y mujeres. So yes, we do have at the present moment we have the dominant and the dominated. But when we look at it, the dominated people are the ones who give power to those who are dominating you. If they get together, then they have power of numbers because the leaders are few. And we put those leaders into power, but we are many in civil society. And we have the power of numbers. So if we are strong, we can ensure that those who are in power do not divide us. Because one of the things about um, keeping power is to divide the community. Mm -hmm. By dividing the community, they become more powerful. So divide and rule is their motto. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that, that we are no longer going to be divided. We are all going to be together. And that applies to every kind of division, whether it is race division, whether it is class division, whether it is gender division, we have um, 50% of the world's population are women. And can the women remain unheard? Their voices are not heard by anyone. Now, why is it that their voices are not heard? If they get together, their voices will be heard because then their voices will be loud and clear. Mm -hmm. For as long as it's only a few people who are speaking, those voices are not going to be heard. For as long, long as we are divided, our voices won't be heard because we are divided. Therefore, it's important for us to come together and to look at what are the things that unite us. There will always be certain differences. We're not always going to see the world in the same way. But the differences are few. The points of unity are many. And we must look for the point of unity and unite. That is the way to build a strong civil society where you can, you can say, okay, we disagree on this, let's leave it aside. But we agree on this. So let's unite around this. What we disagree on, we can keep it aside and discuss it. You don't have to fight over it. But what we agree on, let us unite around that and build a strong civil society, a strong um, gender movement, and so on. Usted habló mucho de, de, de la unidad, de la unificación del pueblo. Esto me recuerda a una historia que me contó de Mandela cuando eh, lo, acusaron, lo acusaban de traidor, eh, sus propios eh, copartidarios, porque él estaba negociando con los blancos, él, él, él quería llegar a una paz con los blancos, no en el fondo dominarlos, no, no expulsarlos de África. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que hizo él en ese caso con, con estas acusaciones de, de traición? ¿Cuál es la, cuál es la visión nueva que, que, él, que él brindó? I think it's the same as what happened with Gandhiji as well, mm -hmm. because he also negotiated with the British, and uh, he was always very polite, very good to the British as well. Mm -hmm. And there were a few people who criticized Mandela who criticized Gandhi as well. 
But by far the majority of the people appreciate what Mandela did because it's only a few people who want war and want violence. Not the majority of the people. The majority of the people want to live in peace. Mm. And if you can bring about peace by talking to people, by negotiating with people, I think that a big majority of people are happy with that. But what happens is that there are people who are troublemakers who will try to convince the majority of the people that the things that you are suffering today is because of what Mandela did, mm. which is not true, because you are suffering because of they, these leaders' problems. Mm. Uh, and that, that is what happens in most countries where you have a leadership that is corrupt, that is not doing their work properly, and then they blame people before them, like Mandela and Gandhi and so on, and say that you, you know, allowed the British to go with your money, or you allowed the Mandela to, uh, you know, let the whites take all your money away. And that's why you are in poverty. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's about poverty, it's mm. about economics yeah. that people grumble about. And really speaking, that is not the issue because there are many ways in which a government can bring about equity. Taxation is one of the things. And we see, for instance, previously in the Scandinavian countries, it was taxation that made them get the money and provide facilities for all the people. So when you get taxes, when people are paying their taxes according to their wealth, so if a person is very rich, they have to pay more taxes. And those taxes are not going to go to the politicians, which is what happens now. And that is not right. But if the taxation is used wisely, then you can provide good hospitals, free health care for the people, you can provide free education for the people, you can provide good infrastructure for the country, you can provide um, health care and social services for your community, which is what we want. Uh, you know, infrastructure, transportation, education, social services, health care, and money goes towards that mm -hmm. instead of money going towards arming yourself because you, now you want to protect your own wealth. Be um, money goes towards paying uh, the government more. Mm -hmm which is uh, what happens, spending on government. People appointed the government, why should they take more? And this is where the problem is. It's not with the negotiators. The negotiators did it in good faith and they brought about peaceful changes. Now it's left to the government how they use Mm -hmm. the power that they have now got.